Oh my god, I've, I've, accidentally, I've accidentally spilled my milkshake on the floor. You spilled what? Don't cry over spilled milk. Please. <sighs> Always with the jokes, isn't you, Marco? Yeah, that's it. That's it. You know. Speaking of jokes. Really here, bad jokes. Speaking of jokes, here's one for you. Okay. So, my cousin was a, was doing a social experiment today. He had to wear a, he had to wear a Leeds United shirt for two weeks in a row. So far, he's been punched, spat at, and verbally abused. Yeah. It's going to be it's, it's going to be interesting to see what happens when he leaves the house. <laughs> oh, beautiful! Um, I predict the playoffs. Oh well, yeah. <laughs> you know the they were singing uh, the, the Leeds the fans when they beat Leicester. Uh, and Ipswich I think they did the double over both of them um, they were singing I predict a riot really loud like they were getting excited thinking they were the best team in the league and then um, when Leicester knew they were um, getting promoted uh, they were singing uh, really loud I predict the playoffs <laughs> you know, I'm, not a Le- I'm not a Leicester fan but you, do, but you know what me and my mate were singing earlier what we, we, we were going Leeds, Leeds are falling apart again. Yeah, yeah, I love that. <laughs> how, about, yeah, how, about, how about Ipswich back in the top tier? For the first oh, yeah, time, yeah. For the fir- that was very first, good. I know, that they got time since promoted twice on the bounce. Yeah. First time since 2002 they were in the Premier League. Yeah, very exciting. There's, I've got a work colleague who supports Ipswich as well, so happy for him. I'm just glad that they weren't champions because yeah <laughs> Go on, I don't, nah, we would have never heard the end of it <laughs> nah so um, oh, I've like... got a joke actually for you oh, before oh, we start on. as well Go on, then. Um, it's, it's awful so <clears throat> I hope you're prepared for that so um, it also may rely on you getting like a like a little saying that, that I don't know if many people use you right so how many hands does it take to change a light bulb? Well, I'm going to be realistic and say two. Not a very good joke, is it? No, the answer is many, because many hands make light work. Ah, huh? I get huh? it. Smart. Good, isn't it? It's clever. That's clever. A thing. That's a thing. I read that on Wikipedia the other day. <laughs> 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 How the hell did you find that on Wikipedia? Um, I searched light bulb jokes, and and Wikipedia had a page on light bulb jokes. That was my favourite one out of all of them. Pretty sure you made light work of that, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So, you like the DC universe, don't you? Yeah. And yeah. Pati- and there's a particular character that I know you like. He's Batman's been... quite cool, isn't he? And and <laughs> all his bad guys. I was going to say this actor was played by Heath Ledger. Recently, the actor was played by Heath Ledger. The character was played by. <laughs> 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 the character was played by Heath Ledger. Most yeah, be... that was Most... probably. Uh, if if, uh, if we're thinking along the same lines here, my friend, then um, you know I think he's up there with one of the best live-action portrayals. Of this oh. particular character. Yeah, we're talking. We're talking. Be. We've been talking about a real life Joker here. Or oh, was he a funny guy? No, f- um, funny, funny looking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> funny, ha- funny habit. Funny habits. <laughs> funny habits, really, really, well, but funny. Fu- funny. Uh, I think I'm aware of the, the, you know, your general, general topic of this little video podcast thing so funny you know. not as, funny not as in ha ha funny funny as in yeah, that's a bit funny isn't it <laughs> oh okay oh well they're all weirdo he's, yeah he's called John Wayne Gacy I know of the name you don't know what he's done though not completely so I know he's a serial killer and he's yeah well as you mentioned he kind of had a clown thing, fetish, shall we say? Yeah, he yeah, <laughs> he, he, pr- 
Fortnite kids parties as Pogo the Clown. Oh, I see. He even yeah, said to that... he even said to some people, clowns can get away with murder. Huh. But they all thought he was ta- he was talking about his tendency to grope women. Oh God! Yeah. How, how it's many? Got dark quickly. How many people do you think he killed? What well, as a random guess? Yeah. Oof. Well, he's quite infamous, isn't he? he um, I'm going to say... Ten. Ten? Yeah. Well, sit back and be and be amazed. Well, not amazed. That's amazed. A, that's, a, that's, a, that's, a wrong cho- that's a wrong choice of word there. Oh, well, well done. Well done, John. Yeah, I'm amazed at how many people you've killed. <laughs> Do not take that seriously. Do not take that out of concept. Okay, oh sit God. back and be prepared. Okay. Uh, preparate, get my seatbelt on. Right, so, in. So, John Wayne Gacy discovered that he was a homosexual relatively late in his life. He was 22 years old and a married man when in 1968 he lured a youth into the back room of the fast food franchise that he was operating, mainly nowadays known McDonald's. as... McDonald's? Mainly nowadays known as KFC. Oh, okay. I was going to say, I, I thought it was some Ronald McDonald type, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah, I could see that. Like the Ronald McDonald off that uh, the Racka Racka videos, you know, oh like the psychopath God, they one. Are, they are absolutely funny. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm thinking of now in my head. <laughs> After handcuffing the youth, he tried to bribe him to perform oral sex. But when the youth refused, Gacy tried to sodomise him, but the victim escaped. The young man reported Gacy to the police, who arrested him. And after he was sentenced to 10 years in prison, he, and he was surprisingly a model prisoner, be, because he had no history of serious crime, and then he was released after 18 months. Wow, that's kind of a thing, though. You know, so I don't know loads about serial killers, yeah, but, like... There's a whole thing about how um, charming they're supposed to be. I think you, like, before we set up, you mentioned that you were going to do something on, um, you know, in future, Ted Bundy, right? Yeah. So, um, like, what I hear about him is that, like, everybody thought he was, like, a model citizen, so nobody would have expected it. He kind of had, like, a sort of charisma, right? So... Like it may, maybe that's why you know I, I'm only speculating here that Gacy kind of had that as well. Um, he just seemed like a normal bloke. That's why on he the was outside. not seen as you know a, a threat. He just seemed like a normal bloke on the outside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It could be. So, so after he was released from prison, he moved to Chicago, where he set up a construction business. Within a year of his release, Gacy picked up another youth and tried to force him to have sex. Although he was again arrested, the case against him was dropped when the young man did not turn up in court. So, so yeah, there's some great justice system going on there. Yep. <laughs> Gacy then pulled a gun on another youth who had approached him asking for work and threatened to shoot him if he did not consent to sex. This is giving me Wacky and Phoenix Joker vibes somehow, but like <laughs> more rapey. How about, how about how about another joke, Murray? A jo- yeah, yeah. Well, oh God, at this point, at this point, I don't think I'm in the mood for jokes. Bloody hell, this is bleak. The youth called his bluff, even though Gacy has said that he had killed people before. This was true. The the boy had yeah. man- the youth had managed to leave unharmed. In fact, Gacy had already taken a number of teenage boys back to his home where he had held them captive and sexually abused them over a number of days. And when he got tired of them, he murdered them. Grim. Yeah, yeah, that's one word for it. Well, uh, why is it uh, that you uh, chose this topic for... um... (laughs) <laughs> you're, you're, not, not, not maybe John Wayne Gacy specifically, but uh, you know, serial killers. Like serial killers. Yeah. What, what is the morbid fascination with this? I know it's a huge thing now, isn't it? Like podcasts and um, you know, uh, real 
life docu series on Netflix. Uh, it's, uh, it's quite a an, a common obsession, a cultural zeitgeist at the minute. Do you want the honest truth? Yeah, yeah. Views. <laughs> 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 you, you cynical, cynical man. <laughs> wow, yeah. No, I feel, I feel like there's a, there's a big weight, you know, li- lifted off this, uh, lifted off this show now. You know, every, everybody, all your viewers, all your listeners out there are gonna be. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Gonna know, gonna know the honest truth. To my viewers, I'm sorry. I did not mean to sound like a complete arrogant knobhead. It's just me. You should know me by now. I've been doing this for a few years. You should know me by now. <laughs> anyway, so, where, where, where? in 1977, Gacy was accused of having sexually abused a youth at gunpoint. Although Gacy admitted having engaged in brutal sex with the boy, he claimed that he had been a willing participant who was now trying to blackmail him. The police accepted this story, and Gacy was released with a caution. Oh, see, that's it again. It's that same thing that of uh, you know being so charismatic and like convincing. You know, like that that maybe they can sort of in their psychology, you know, separate what they've done from the truth, and so it almost comes that like they believe their own lies, sort of thing. It becomes part of the, you know, the whole act. Plus, it was the seventies, and and homophobia was very frowned upon. Oh, I see. Yeah, of course. And so, um, again, so I didn't watch the whole series, but um, was it the what is it? The Evan Peters, Jeffrey Dahmer. That's as if that went out of my head. I can't believe it. I mean, so, G- I mean, Gacy did appear in that series. Oh, did he? Yeah, yeah. I've not, um, yeah, and, I've not seen it. I knew that there was a big obsession with it. Yeah, uh, Gacy, but, Gacy yeah. was in the series, and within the three minutes of screen time he got, he was instantly more terrifying than Dharma. Really? Yeah. It's, that is creepy. Yeah, because I was thinking about in that, right? So, uh, from what I heard, like a lot of it was that he kept getting away with this stuff because you know there, there were there was a lot of gay men and also gay black men too yeah. who the authorities you know just didn't care for they thought you know that that's a you know that's a minority that they would probably rather see be gone because they were bigoted themselves so you know perhaps this is why people they deem they un- kept getting away with it to too. society People they deemed unimportant to society and whatnot. Yeah, yeah, that's it. It's horrible. By this time, Gacy was both a successful contractor and a leading and a leading light in the local Democratic Party, who furthermore provided entertainment at children's parties by dressing up as a clown. He also hung out at notorious gay bars in 1978 and met the 27-year-old Jeffrey Rignall at one of these hangouts, having invited the young man to share a joint with him in his car. Once inside the Oldsmobile, Gacy held a chloroform soaked rag soaked over Rignall, Rignall's face. Uh, this is, yeah, it's like, you could, almost cinematic, isn't it? Like, you know, that, that is just so, like, you can picture it's such a scary scene. It gets worse, mate, trust me. <laughs> Rignall awoke to find himself naked in Gacy's cellar, strapped to a device that resembled a pillory. What's a pillory? Yeah, is it, I mean, is it right. Like so I know I've got, I've, I don't want to be that that guy, but you know, like I've studied English, the English language, uh, a fair amount, but um, I don't know every word. <laughs> <laughs> the dictionary is not my favourite book. I, I, I mean, I, imagine, I don't know it. I, what is a pillory? Should we Google it? I imagine they're just like stocks. I imagine. Okay. Should we just... No, in fact, so viewers out there, if you know what a pillory is, you know, comment comments. below. Yeah. But also, I think 
for the context of this video, we're just gonna have, we're just gonna imagine what one is. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> you know, we, we, we'll have our own ideas of what it is. Mine and Mark's might be completely different. Um, see, I'm, see I, I'm imagining that they're more like a pet, that they're more like stocks. Yeah, that is that is again, it's horrible. It's like something out of Saw. Yeah. Gacy, who was also naked, then showed Rignall a number of whips, along with more sinister sexual devices, and explained how he intended to use them. Gacy furthermore told Rignall that if he was a pl that he was a policeman and that he would shoot him if he raised any objections. Gacy's subsequent abuse and torture of Rignall went on for hours. At times, it was so painful that Rignall begged to die, but Gacy would then chloroform him again and wait until he had come round before starting again. Eventually, Rignall promised that he would leave town without telling anyone what had happened to him. So this Gacy's a terrifying motherfucker. <laughs> uh, like, uh, isn't this a family show? Uh, yeah. That kind of language is not really acceptable here. I mean... It... <laughs> <laughs> like after all the stuff we've been talking like, all the stuff that you've brought up it's like oh no no Can't not that one word. bad word naughty I mean, <laughs> I mean in my first video I got a hat trick of calling Nielsen clap three times <laughs> <laughs> well that's, uh, that's an interesting um, you know word for him <laughs> having blacked out again Rignall later woke up to find himself fully dressed and lying in Chicago's Lincoln Park I guess he tried Lincoln. so hard. I guess Lincoln he tried so Park. hard. And, oh. <laughs> I guess he tried so hard and got so far, but in the end, I don't think it even mattered. That was bless you, bless you, Chester. Yeah, blessed in peace, bro. Although there was money in his pocket, his driver's license was missing. He checked into a hospital where it was discovered that he was not only bleeding from the anus, but also that his face and liver had been damaged by chloroform. Although sympathetic, the police had nothing to go on. Rignall could not give them the name, address or license plate number of his abuser. He remained determined to exact his retribution on his attacker and after renting a car, he followed the route along which he thought Gacy had driven him, which he vaguely remembered having registered through a haze of chloroform. So, that's, that's some, yeah, serious determination. Uh, like... Again, that's like movie level stuff. I respect but, the grind. Um, what was that? To, sorry. Trying to find him. I respect the grind. Yeah, yeah, seriously. Um, you know, and how dangerous that would be if you found him again, you know? <clears throat> On identifying the motorway exit that Gacy had taken, he waited patiently there until he eventually saw Gacy's black Oldsmobile sweep by. Having noted down its license plate number, he then followed the car, which Gacy parked in the driveway of 8213 West Summerdale Avenue. That house is still there today. Wow, and, and that's it. So the the crazy thing is, like, he did actually find him, you know? Like, so even though he would, he was, you know, had all the chloroform and, you know, like, the maybe the, I mean, surely the trauma of that event um, and he was still able to find him, and and kind of act on it. That's I insane. wouldn't be, I wouldn't be able to do it. <clears throat> oh, that's oh. yeah, it's traumatizing. Rignall subsequently checked the land registry records and discovered that the house in question belonged to John Wayne Gacy. He then took everything that he had uncovered to the police. When they followed up Rignall's leads, the Chicago Police Department ascertained that. Gacy's suburban home was outside their jurisdiction, which therefore oh, meant really? that they could not press felony charges against Gacy. See, this, this is it. You know, maybe like I don't know. Have, have there been many big, you know, stories of of serial killers, you know, recently? You know, other than other than that, Lucy Letby, probably not. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. So that's it. But it's like. Uh, I'm thinking, yeah, there's, there is quite a pattern, isn't there, of just like the pure incompetence of the law in these things that just allow them to go on and on and on. You know, I think, it's. I think the last yeah. major serial killer we had was. Well, you could put the Yorkshire Ripper in there. 
Oh yeah, yeah, I did. That is one that I do know a bit about because I did watch the series of that. But there's also it was Harold, on British but, TV. But there's also Harold Shipman. Oh yeah, yeah, of course. Two hundred and fifty bodies a to his name. He was as well, wasn't he? Yeah. yeah Two two hundred and fifty bodies to his name. Wow. Because again, like say like Lucy Letby, you know, it's it's these people that you're supposed to trust. Yeah. And and I think that's what makes that really terrifying. Literally like, pretty. I think I think maybe you know, even the image of, you know, a clown, like I think that's why that's so scary to a lot of people. I know you hate clowns, don't you? I do hate clowns. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. So, you know, it's this kind of image that is meant to be friendly. It's meant to be there to uh, make you look laugh. after you. Yeah, yeah, or make you laugh. But then it's sort of like twisting that, making that into like something, you know, uncanny and, and evil. Like uh, that that's that's what makes stuff scary. That's why the Joker is scary. Um, I'm also sorry to the viewers that. if you heard that. I'm also sorry to the viewers if you heard that noise in the background. Yes, I did just fart. Uh, well, there's nothing like a little bit of levity. Um, and the serious moments like this. <laughs> talking about clowns, I'm shit scared. <laughs> oh. <laughs> for for his part, Gacy agreed to give Rignall three thousand dollars towards his medical bills, and then the matter was dropped. Later that year, Mrs. Elizabeth Peast made a report to the local police saying that her 15-year-old son Robert had gone missing. He had been looking for a summer job and said that he was going to visit a contractor who lived nearby. The neighbourhood pharmacist had then ventured that the contractor concerned must be Gacy, who had recently given him an estimate for the refurbishment of his shop. The, phone, the, the police phoned Gacy, who denied all knowledge of the missing boy. In fact, Robert Peast was laying dead on Gacy's bed as they spoke. On checking their records, the police then discovered Gacy's earlier conviction for sodomy and went to see him. So now, they... now, this is the sort of moment where you're building up hope, but I don't know. We, okay, are we, are we nearly there? Come on, please. However, when Gacy refused to accompany them to the police station to discuss the matter, they realised that they had no charge on which to hold him. After My his God! After his house was put under 24-hour surveillance, Gacy nevertheless managed to place Peace's body into a tr in, into a, into the boot of a car and smuggle it into his car. Put it into the boot of a car, suitcase, and put it into the boot of his car. <laughs> he then oh, that would have been one heavy suitcase. He then jumped behind. So. I mean, he was a big fat bloke. Surely he could have managed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's he, it. He then jumped behind the wheel and raced off at top speed, leaving the police standing. Having lost, his, having lost his tail, Gacy drove to the nearby Des Plaines River and dropped Pete's body into it. The police then obtained a search warrant, but the only potential clue that they found in Gacy's house was a receipt from a chemist that had been made out to Robert Peast. It wasn't much, but it was enough to justify continuing their surveillance of Gacy. It, it, it is get, don't worry Marco, it is getting closer. Yeah, yeah. I see, I see already there. You know, like that. The, like, there's evidence there that sort of, yeah, places places Robert Peace there, and uh, yeah, it seems like the walls are slowly closing in. Gacy, however, was becoming cocky, and one morning invited two of the policemen who had been stationed outside his house to join him inside for breakfast. As they see, that is the thing. So, like. <laughs> Uh, I'm thinking of you watched the um, you watched Gotham didn't you yes um, what it sort of reminds me of this compulsion um, you know and, and I think I think a lot of them had this as well like not the sort of wanting to get caught but maybe like there's something in their ego you know wants to show off about it wants to play around with it so for me that kind of reminds me it's really well depicted actually in Gotham yeah. um, as with the Riddler in oh, the yeah. second series of that so the Riddler like he's so he, he's committing crimes he's doing bad stuff but there's part of him that wants to you know show I'm really clever 
and you know I'm going to leave this I'm going to leave this clue behind just to show how clever I am and uh, and then if if they um, I've outsmarted everyone because nobody's going to get this riddle you know and nobody's uh, you might sound like I'm completely rambling now but that's <laughs> fine <laughs> <No, it's> mate <laughs> But um, yeah, if I try as oh, I've kind of lost my point. But I think if you kind of get what I mean, that they're toy they're toying with everyone uh, because deep down, part of their ego wants to show off about what they've done, and I think that's kind of where Gacy is in that. Now this is where you found out where where, where we find out how many people he killed. Oh yeah, as so as teased at the start of this episode, you said ten. Yeah, yeah, uh, and I feel like that may be a conservative estimate. It's uh, yeah. As they sat down to eat, the policeman noticed a peculiar smell, which they investigated, which was the undeniable stench of death. It turned out that Gacy had inadvertently switched off the pump that drained the, ba- the cellar, and that the war and the water that had flowed under the house as a result disturbed the oil soil in which Gacy had buried 29 of his victims wow which on that's, another... that's where he buried 29 of his victims so as well so you know uh, that's that's not including the one he dumped in the river right in the lake even another four bodies including that of Robert Peace were found in the river The youngest of his victims had been nine, while the oldest had been fully grown men. Again, John... those are the ones that were found. <laughs> you know, that's unbelievable. John Wayne Gacy confessed to 33 murders and was convicted in 1980. Despite, his... Despite his known homosexuality, when he was on death, th- death row, Gacy received fan mail from women who said that they admired him because he was a deviant and that they loved the excitement of a wild fight. See, that's that's a very odd compulsion as well. Like that, like is oh, I don't I don't get that, but you know there there is that sort of draw of danger for these people. Um, yeah, it's often yeah, it's commonly depicted in in series and things as well. Like you get these people who are obsessive and want to be in on it. Yeah, and, like get their few minutes of fame. Like, look how close I came to a serial killer. Yeah, yeah. Like, there's one. Wasn't there one of them we got? Oh yeah. Now I, I'm probably spoiling some of your next episodes because I, I I did watch a I watched a Ted Bundy one. But yeah, that's a common thing, isn't it? Yeah. But while he was on death row, his last meal was fried shrimp, a bucket of KFC chicken, because prior to his arrest, he managed three KFC restaurants. So we got a bucket of fried shrimp, a bucket of KFC chicken, and a pound and a pound of strawberries. That's interesting. See, you know, like did Ronald McDonald so exist before this point? Because if he did, you know, I think that that was that that image, you know, of a cl- fast food restaurant clown would be, you know, toxic for forever, you know, after after Gacy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's like the nice. last thing you want, you know, after there's a serial killer one, the last one thing that you want your mascot to be is it's a based, clown. It's based off a serial killer. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Unless, unless, yeah, they made Ronald McDonald afterwards. Who knows? Wow. Yeah, yeah. No wonder Racker, you know, had such uh, success with those videos. But, yeah. And thankfully, to end this grim, this grim story, in 1994, Gacy was executed by lethal injection. His his last words were, "Kiss my ass." Wow. So. Yeah, I bet he thought he was so funny. I bet he thought he was such a clown. So. Um, but but lethal injection, you know, like, that's nothing, you know, compared to what he inflicted on other people. That's almost like, you know, a, you know, it's kind of almost like an easy way out for him. You know, what, 
what's more punishment? I don't know. Yeah, I, I suppose like some people, like you know, in like acts of war or whatever or terrorism, you know, the best thing to do is just you know put them out of them, like kill them right there and then, and that to stop them doing anything else. But you know, when they're locked away, like what is the bigger punishment? Is it just killing them? You know, putting them down like a you know like a dog, or is it? You know, is it letting them rot? Because if he felt absolutely no remorse for his actions, then, then, then it's not really a punishment. It's yeah, it's a tricky one. Depicted in the Dharma series, when he when you see him drowning a lad, he's like praying to God to help him or whatnot, and Gacy just goes, "God can't help you. I'm God." Yeah, that's the thing. Like, like it's it's yeah, the God complex. Yeah, I was thinking about this as well. Like, um, uh, just kind of how to to phrase this. The the certain people who perhaps have a sort of maybe a deep seated fear of death, right? Um, and yeah. their way of controlling it, you know, of um. Of sort of overcoming it is inflicting it on it's the to, yeah, it's to, yeah, it's to think, yeah, it's to do stuff that's related to death. So that could be, you know, like that that could be killing people, and, and then sort of have a thing of like, uh, and then that kind of develops like a god complex then because they're choosing kind of who lives and who dies, and they have this sort of weird sadistic control over it. Like the Zodiac Killer, he said that he was collecting slaves for the afterlife. Wow. Maybe Gacy thought he was doing the same thing. Like, like all the people he killed would be his servants in the afterlife. Yeah, that was like some... That, <laughs> I don't know why, but in my fear. head, that's I came I thought of like the Mormon <laughs> thing. You know, when they like marry as many women as possible, because then when they die, they get their own planet with all their wives on it. To be, fair, be, to, be fair, to be fair, that'd be pretty sick. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to become a Mormon. <laughs> no chance. I'm not even, I'm not even Christian. <laughs> and okay. here's a little interesting fact for you. On the same day that Gacy got executed, Jeffrey Dahmer got baptised and there was a solar eclipse. Okay. Well, I'm not superstitious, but... Those are the kind of spooky details that people love. <laughs> Wait, it's, it's when the moon goes over because it eclipses the sun. Is that lunar? Is that lunar or solar? Goes mm. over the sun. Yeah. Uh, is that, is that, that lunar was, or solar? Yeah, I would say lunar, right? I don't know, but yeah, there was an eclipse on the same day Gacy got executed and Dharma got baptized. Yeah. Yeah, people love, people love that stuff. <laughs> makes sense. Makes sense. It's essentially, it's a birth and a death. Yeah, I mean, I mean, if life was a story, it would be symbolic. But for me, I don't. I'm, I'm not one of these people who thinks everything happens for a reason. Uh, I just think that lots of people would make, like to make uh, connections to make things into better stories. You to know, make them, to, make, like, to, make them, to make themselves feel better, essentially. Maybe, yeah, to to have this sense that everything is connected. To make sense of a senseless world. That is a good point. So that was that was the tale of John Wayne Gacy. And what a bleak and horrifying story that was. Um But do I regret being on this? podcast video with you Mark spending some quality time chatting away even despite the horrendous subject matter no I don't I've, <laughs> you know it's been a very interesting and enlightening chat you know who, and whilst I wouldn't say you know it's the most fun I've ever had not everything has to be fun to be worthwhile you know like like cause, uh, well it's like some people some people do find this sort of you know subject matter like, interesting. One, uh, yeah, but I, but yeah, like have this kind of 
morbid curiosity but i think god nah, i'm sounding like i'm so high right now but i'm not <laughs> <laughs> sounding like i've just been smoking it's like the ganja chat, it's like one of those chats you're having two in the morning with your mates when you want a night out <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Where every word takes about ten minutes to come out your mouth. Like, yeah, and like totally, it's all connected and stuff, bro. <laughs> where can these people? Yeah. Fo- where can these people find your YouTube channel, Marco? Oh, my YouTube channel. You don't want to watch my YouTube channel. It's got all like weird PS2 wrestling videos. I haven't been on there. I haven't uploaded anything in time. In years, and that's people. But, um, that's why people want to do it because it's nostalgic. I suppose so. You can probably watch. Oh yeah, you are actually in some of my videos, Mark, aren't you? Yeah, like not I'm actually sure. as a physical presence, but as a, a created custom character. So in fact, I am going to do it. I'm going to plug my YouTube channel so you can all see Mr. Mark Gatheridge in action, uh, fighting other wrestlers and some of my other friends. So my YouTube channel, I think, is Bobsy Pringles, isn't it? B O B S I P R I N G L E Z. There you go. And to make it easier, <laughs> to make it easier, I will link it in the description. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know why I did that. Like, I literally, <laughs> as I was spelling out them letters, I knew that you could do that. <laughs> 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 I should have stopped halfway through. I? I should have just given up. But yeah, who knows? <laughs> who knows? Yeah. And maybe get you back on for another episode one day. Yeah, yeah, one of these days. If I if I have some spare time, you know, it will be my pleasure. Because, um, you know, uh, like, uh, as I said, it's, uh, like before I went completely off piece and started sounding like a weird stoner, um, <laughs> you know, I I appreciate the you know spending time with you having this chat and learning something new you know it, like even if it's morbid that was so, the point I wanted to try and get to so it been an education boy my hair right so that's going to do it for this episode if you guys like the video please give it a thumbs up apparently it helps me out I don't know how it's just what other people say so I'm just copying them um Leave a comment in the video on what you thought, and please give Marco a give Marco a view, give him a subscribe. He'll, I'm sure, he'll muchly appreciate that. Or will I? I don't know if I will. No, <laughs> no, don't, don't do that. Just, just watch if you are morbidly curious. Which, given from the fact that you are watching on serial killers, you may be. <laughs> <laughs> There we go, guys. Thank I you. I don't know what kind of point you want to take from that, but still, just, right, give, I'll just, let Mark give, sign off. <laughs> give him a give, give, give him a watch. Give, say something nice in the comments, and please like, subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Peace. Mwah.